They're really, they're really high on him though. Bro, from the minute he got he got hired by Impact, I said he's gonna win the world title. I don't know when, but within the first five years of him being in Impact, he would have won that title. And I think it's either been a year or two. It might have been a year. Or so far. fair enough. I, I bro, it's it's weird because I, I yeah, I can't unsee it. You you see it. That's your vision. And we'll, we'll come and back when I'm right. I promise you that, that <laughs> episode of Indie Taker is gonna be all reverb. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna cause my hell out that podcast. I'm gonna spoil it. It was in the building tonight. Oh, what a feeling! I'm feeling right. You ain't even got to get your purses out, boy. We are back. It's been how long? We were meant to we, do something last week, but yeah, shit happened. You know, he was gallivanting in LA. I was, I was in LA. <laughs> Jim wasn't feeling too. How are you feeling today, though, bro? You, you good? Yeah, now, I'm yeah? good, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm, boy, I'm good. Indie takers, it boys. We are back in the building. It's been, it's been, oh. it's been a while, man. It's your boy, Del boy. Got my co-host with me, Young Jim, Young Wolf, Yo, Young Sasuke. Yo. And boy, how's, like, how's how's my mic come out of its stand? Mid recording. Um, dead. <laughs> Wait there. Oh my days. Technicals. No, we're keeping this. We're keeping this in. Technicals. Yeah, we're here. We're here. We're here. We're here. We're here. Yeah, we're man. Here. We are live. And boy, we've got a jam packed, jam packed episode. We've got so much to talk about. We've pretty much got two Too weeks much. worth of content to speak about. Um, even before we start, make sure you guys also check out Revolution Radio. It is mm-hmm. an AEW exclusive podcast hosted by Mex and NK. So make sure you guys check that out. It's going to be Shout every to Thursday them. live from, I think, about 7 p.m., 8 p.m. And it's also going to be on the, the podcast streams as well. So you can also get the audio for that. Um, yeah, man, Wrestling's Boys, the team, the whole mandem, the family, we're just creating more content. 2K content is coming soon as well. We just need 2K to fucking patch the fucking <laughs> game so the mandem can eat. Get me. We need Gem to start releasing. We need Ola to start releasing. I mean, Ola has been, yeah, Ola has started 2K23. And yeah. we need Nafi. I yeah. think Nafi starts this week as well, isn't it? But mm-hmm. we move, man. We move. Where should we start off, bro? Supercard of Honor? Oh, boy. Yeah, man. Let's go. Supercard of Honor. How did you find the paper? I enjoyed it. What you saw and what I saw are two different things. Is it? I was there live. Yeah. So my experience is probably a bit different to what you saw. But obviously, I rewatched it because I enjoy watching sports and commentary in it. So, of course. Wow. Yeah. Um my experience, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the show. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Yeah. Um there was maybe one or two matches I would have just taken off or had in a pre-show because I just didn't feel like they did anything for me yeah. um throughout the show. But in terms of like commentary, obviously we saw Nigel come out first thing. I say, yeah, cool. That was off to a great start. That was dope. Um, but yeah, I think the flow of the show was nice. Some results. Oh, don't get me started. <laughs> Dave us up. Two results pissed me the fuck off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know which one you're talking Two about. results pissed me the fuck off. Man. But, I mean, like yourself, I enjoyed, like, top to bottom for me, it was, I don't think a Ring of Honor have missed so far mm-hmm. since coming back. Like, in terms of pay-per-views, they haven't missed. The results, though... Oh, yeah, you, you you can tell that Tony Khan is the one booking this shit. <laughs> Let's be honest. You can tell. Do you know what I mean? But we're gonna go we're gonna go top to bottom um for the results of the card. Um mm-hmm. did you watch did you watch the zero hour? I did not. No, no, no. no I'm not gonna I say did. I did. I didn't watch it either. So um we're gonna start off first with El Hidro Del Vikingo versus Commander for the AAA Mega Championship match. We were mad late. We literally got to the to the arena, maybe like 10 minutes. I mean, the last two minutes. Ah. They were doing their final sequence. E. So we didn't actually see the match. I watched it yeah. after, but the match was great. What did you think? Of, oh, so when you watched it back? When I watched it back, I thought the match was yeah. good. I, I, it was a great opener, and it was a great Perfect. way to showcase, like, if you've never seen these guys before, one, where are you, and why are you underneath a rock? Because... <laughs> These men have had their visas for God knows how long and they've been killing it. <laughs> they've been up and down. They've been GCW. They've probably been Defy. They've been everywhere. They have been everywhere. So if you haven't seen them and it's your first time seeing them, because there was a lot of kids at the Ring of Honor show as well, so I can assume that it's probably a lot of their 
a lot of the, their first, first time, time watching yeah, them. Yeah. And what an amazing opener. Bro, you know? so good. What an amazing if you, opener. If you, want, if you want to see a match that demonstrates and showcases what Lucha Libre is all about, like, you just need to go and watch that match. Um, and for everyone that was on social media the week before, two weeks before, talking about who's Vikingo, who's Vikingo, you know now. You yeah. know now who this guy is. This guy is the future of Lucha Libre wrestling, man. Like, he... Just some of the stuff he does just shouldn't be possible. Like, turning inside out, like, doing a 450 on himself or, like, that thing that he does where he bounces off the ropes and then does, like, the... um, Or, like, the arm drag. The arm drag thing. Fam, he's just different. Like Even so... Commander's rope walk, like... I've been seeing him do that for the past year, and it's like every time he does it, I'm still shocked by it because it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to me. Doesn't make sense how bro. anybody can be so poised to just walk the rope and then either do like a senton or like a, a sky twister or something like that. Match was just an excellent match, man. Honestly, and it's like sometimes in wrestling, I feel like a lot of fans have this notion of, "Well, what's the story? What's the story?" But sometimes when it comes to certain things, you don't necessarily don't, need, don't the need a story. Yeah, this was just a, a world title match where. This is just a showcase. If you've never seen Lucha, Lucha Wrestling before, or if you didn't watch AEW, um, Kenny versus Vikingo, this is this is your in. This yeah, is your in to see two much. world-class performers do what they mm -hmm. do best, and they knocked it out of the park, man. Pretty much, man. Absolutely Solid match. The, park. Um, the next match we had was the Embassy versus AR Fox, Blake Christian, and Metalik. Um, we were wrong about this result. I think yeah. we both had a feeling that um, AR Fox, Blake Christian, Metalik would win. It was a good match. It was a good match. I think that's down to because of the whole Brian Cage fiasco. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Um, so it looks like he's re-signed and no one's probably caught wind of it or people just don't care. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a great match. Uh, the Embassy look, look better than ever. And the more I see them, the more I'm on your side of the fence now where I feel like they should just move mad. They should just do a United Empire or Bullet Club or TMDK and just expand into different promotions oh, they, and build. Do you get? Yeah. They need, they need at least 10 men. <laughs> they need 10 like Bro, you can't be called the Embassy and you're just a trio. Mm. You need like, because the Embassy before in Ring of Honor had a lot of men. Like, these men can recruit. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, someone like a, a Blake Christian at one point maybe turns heel and mm. ends up joining the embassy. Because there's a bro. AR Fox is great. Metalik is great. Blake Christian is amazing. amazing but there's man. something about Blake Christian where I can honestly see him. I can honestly see them building this new ring of honor around. Him. Yeah. Like, it's... bro, it's just like, he's just too crisp with it and it doesn't even make any sense. Make you said this the first, the first episode we did. That bro. you feel like he's one of the pillars of Ring of Honor. Bro, it, it, it makes sense. Like, yeah. just that match with Zack Sabre Jr., I was just like, you know what? I've always thought this guy was good, but for him to be able to, for them to put them in, in this type of match, it's, it shows mm -hmm. that maybe Tony sees something in him and that he wants to build this company around him. And I think, I think it makes sense, man. You know? Who you, so, a uh, question I have for you in yeah. terms of, like, the, the six-man tag titles. Who do you think is next in line or better yet? Who do you think is going to be the, the team to beat the embassy? Oh, that's a good question still. Um, because, see, the team that I want to say, I'm just going to say it, right? I feel like a division of the United Empire should should take the titles. Okay. I, I, I would like that personally. Um, would it happen? I don't think so. But that's I don't know. Like this the team that beats them also needs to be very, very credible. Like they need to be that's because that's how Tony Khan's building them up, like to just be this unstoppable force. Sim sort of like a bloodline kind of kind of thing, not obviously on their level storytelling yeah. wise, but yeah, like just uh in terms of uh, credibility, they're really, really gonna be the team that beats them needs to be on their level of like, okay, when I'm watching this match, I believe that you guys can actually take them out. Yeah. Um. So that's my pick personally. Yeah. What about you? I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be against that. I think that would be sick because mm. like we, we keep saying, factions, 
this isn't the WWE. Factions can move around. Facts. They can plot themselves in different companies. And obviously, we know Ring of Honor and New Japan have their relationship. Yeah. We can easily see a section of um, UE that haven't got title belts that could potentially, you know, because I feel like so far, Ring of Honor haven't really established that many trios. They haven't. They haven't really established yeah. many trios. So it will be kind of hard to like, I don't know. My only thing is I wouldn't want them, well, it's Tony Khan, so I wouldn't want them to book it like AEW where he has the, the, the trios titles, where he has them champions on a, a mad streak. And then out of nowhere, someone just comes and then they end up winning. Yeah, as yeah, to like yeah. Building a black. And this is my problem. And I'm harping on about it as well. <laughs> it's just the whole building of a division. Yeah. We need to be able to kind of see plenty of potentials rather than us looking at the booking of like one in, one out. Like everybody could potentially shine and have some sort of, I don't know, man, but I'm not against UE. I, I mm. think UE would be amazing. UE would be great. Um, then we had the ROH Women's Championship, um, Athena versus Yuka Sakazaki. Um, yeah, uh. I, <laughs> I fucked in this match, I can't lie. It's, it's, <laughs> for me, this was a bag of bag of bag of, but this here, baby, I love this match, I can't lie. Uh, I thought it was good. Uh, this is I, didn't, I, didn't cold, know, I didn't know it was going to get banger stars on, on the I, show. I fucked with it, man. <laughs> I can't lie to you. I, bro, I was invested in this match. I, can't lie. I was invested in this match. Were there probably other better matches? I mean, yeah. yeah. But yeah. for me, this hit everything. The, from the entrances, Athena's entrance was just... Um, I've, I said this literally just now, right, to um, to, to a few people, Ola being one of them. Shout out to Ola. Um, Athena is doing God's work with that Women's Championship. Right. right? <laughs> She's made that belt one of the most prestigious women's championships in all of wrestling right now, which is crazy to hear, considering I didn't know where she was going to go when in Ring of Honor first came back and she won the title. I didn't know what she was going to do. Bro, week after week after week, banger after banger after banger, consistently. She's gone, man. She's clear. Nah, she, she, tri- she tricked me. me. Yeah, no. Nah. Her, her and, and Yuka Zakazaki, just like, their chemistry together is incredible. Like, there was one spot where uh, you can ran like ran and jumped off the stage. That looks sick. Oh, to yeah, see, yeah, like, yeah. like even just Yuka's like energy, like she just gives me like this infectious feeling. Like she reminds me of like NXT Bailey. Mm. Like that's that's the kind of vibe she gives me. Like she's such a lovable person. Like and we had kids in front of us that were cheering for her. I was just gonna ask you, what was the crowd like towards towards second, her? Second, I think they fucked with her. Yeah, like from what I remember, the crowd fucked with this match heavily. Like it was, it was a good match, man. Um, and I saw videos online because obviously Ring of Honor didn't show any mention of it. Um, Trinity was in the crowd. Yeah, she was. Yeah, she was watching ten- tentatively to this match. Um, I mean, I'm hearing <laughs> people are saying that they think that Trinity might show up in Ring of Honor. She might be the person to beat um, Athena. Uh, How do you we'll, feel about that? Um, it's crazy because I don't want to say that Trinity is above Ring of Honor. Mm. But then at the same time, I don't believe anybody's above Ring of anything. Honor. Yeah. Anything. Like if 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 it's on if it's in you to go and work, Ring of Honor is a good step. It's a good step. Yeah. Right. My only problem is we're having this conversation, who's probably gonna be the person to beat her. We're still kind of like getting a feel of what this division is looking like. You know, we've got the, the Kylie not Kylie Ray, we've got the Sky Blues, we've got the we've got Willow, we've got um We've got a plethora of women that have been wrestling consistently, but there's still no Trisha Dora, but we still haven't <laughs> got like a, a set division. Set roster, yeah. It just seems like women are either just wrestling or they're pulling up for the title. There's no real like stories that are intertwining in terms of like the actual division, which is what mm-hmm. we we should see. Yeah. For us to kind of get an idea of, okay, cool, what could potentially happen moving forward? So, um, yeah, it was, it's very, it's, I'm, I'm intrigued to kind of see what happens moving forward. But for now, keep that belt on Fina, man. Yeah, I, I agree. Keep that belt on Fina. Or even let, I, her go to, let her take that belt to Japan. Let her take that belt everywhere and just fucking defend it. Good. I feel like... Do you feel... Question as well. Um, actually, I'll leave this question to the very end. I'll leave this yeah. to the very end. But um, what, one thing I will say is there may not be history between them two in terms of Athena and Trinity, but they can still tell a story from where they both were. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, so it... it it would be quite an entertaining story, but 
My my heart is set on Willow winning the Ring of Honor Women's Championship. I'm not against that at all. I'd love for that. But I just don't know whether they're going to let Trinity hold it. If she does come into Ring of Honor, let Trinity hold it for a couple of months, maybe three or four months. Then she goes to AEW and she's a main staple in the AEW Women's Division. And then you kind of move Willow back into the title picture. We'll see. Because the thing is, even with Trinity, like, again, this is indie takers. We don't want to talk too much on, on, on AEW. Yeah. Like, my thing is, what do you think will serve her better? Would it be working AEW, where mm-hmm. obviously a bit more eyes on you, it's, it's national TV, AEW's AEW? Mm-hmm. Or would it make sense for her to now go to Ring of Honor, where she could be her sit like, Be who she wants to be, less noise. There's not that many people that you're competing against. And mm-hmm. you are generally going to be the biggest star in not even necessarily just for the women's division, you're the biggest star in that company. Yeah. If it's, I think it's fair to say. If if Trinity was to go to AEW, she'd mo- I mean to Ring of Honor, she'd most likely be the biggest star. Whereas with yeah. AEW, I do feel like there's an issue with shiny toy syndrome where Tony will sign pe- t- Tony will sign people. He will he will give them a, a, a small push here and there. They'll be on week to week TV, cutting promos, you know, interrupting people's promos, have a match here and there, but then they kind of get lost in the shuffle. Whereas with Ring of Honor now still just like restarting again, she can cement her place. Yeah, facts. She can definitely cement her place. So mm-hmm. like what, what would you say is what would you prefer where would you prefer to see her? I would prefer to see her in Ring of Honor, personally, because I want to see Trinity wrestle. I feel like she's shown so many signs when she was in the E that she can go in the ring and she has what it takes to actually hold great matches. Of course, with how is it so entertainment heavy, um, we, we've only seen maybe her go for like 15 minutes max, 20 minutes max. I would want to see her have a 30 minute banger, like just wrestle. I just want to see her wrestle. And if she goes to AEW, she can do that. Don't get me wrong, but it won't be as consistent as it is on Ring of Honor. Um, yeah. And it will be a lot more story driven than wrestling driven. So like you said, not long ago, it depends on what she wants to do in it. If she, Either way, I don't really care. Um, the ty- the shiny toy syndrome, I hear it, but I don't think if she went to AEW, I genuinely feel like TK would protect her in case he wanted to do Trini versus Mercedes at Forbidden Door. That's a good point. Which which would be mad, like for them two especially to come full circle like that. Hey. That's insane. So uh, yeah, I think I think Ring of Honor though. Uh, you okay. know what? Yeah, you know what? In okay, with us discussing that, I'm I think I'm for either Willow or Trinity within the Ring of Honor women's title. Mm-hmm. I see the vision. I definitely see the vision. All right, Samoa Joe versus Mark Briscoe for the Ring of Honor TV Championship. This result pissed me off. That yeah, this was a <laughs> this was a good match. This was good a match. very, 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 very good match. Great story. Um, great storytelling. You know, we have Mark who's chasing this TV title. He's never beaten Samoa Joe in in a match. This was especially with the fact that we were having the the, the tag team titles next. Mm-hmm. Mark should have won. Yeah. Let's keep it a stack. Mark should have won. I don't I, see. I honestly don't see why this result came into play. It's not me. It's actually not making sense. Like the more I sit here and try and think about it, the more questions that pop into my head, and the more it just doesn't make sense. Like Joe's fine. Joe could do without this title. You could have put Joe into the to the world title pitch if you really wanted to. Like you could have moved him up against Claudio because I, I I don't know who's next for Claudio personally. Well, we'll get there. Um, we'll get there, but. Mark, yeah, Mark should have won, man. Honestly, when I saw when I saw the ending of the match, Mark, you know when you just you know when that that excitement just goes, bro. Me, Max, Lloyd, and Mark, we just all looked at each other like, come on, really and truly, this this wasn't the result that should happen. It's like, and for me, it, it took away from a good match. Yeah, it took away from a very good match because really right. and truly, Mark should have had this moment. Nobody deserved to have that moment more than Mark. So, and, you know, I'm sure at some point we're probably going to get some sort of 
there's probably a reason for this booking. There's probably yeah. maybe at a bigger show they want to give him an opportunity to win the title. But come on, this is WrestleMania week, Supercard Bonner. Mark would have easily won the title. We had, I, we had our heart sets on it. Yeah. Like everyone like, everyone thought Mark was the guy. But Yeah. And I don't know, man. Really and truly like <laughs> someone who is a pillar, a backbone of Ring of Honor, it would have just made sense for him to just win mm-hmm. the title. Samojo's had a great run. That's, that doesn't take away from him. They could have easily done maybe like a back and forth. Similar to what Samoa Joe and Finn Balor done when they were doing the back and forth with their NXT title. Could have and that was done great. that. That was yeah. good. I wouldn't have minded a Mark Briscoe two-month run because already Tony Khan likes to book people to give them 20 defences before pay-per-view anyways. <laughs> so by that point, Mark Briscoe would have probably had 20 defences. Would have had 20 successful defences before he lost it back to Samoa Joe and then they could have done a back and forth. Like, I would have been fine with that. Mm. I probably would have complained, but in hindsight, I would have looked back like, yeah, it makes sense. Whereas now I'm just like, I don't know what happens next. Like, it's yeah. just, I don't know. It was just a dampener, man. It was a dampener. But yeah. Then we have Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Daniel Garcia. Um, this was a decent match. It was decent good. match. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't. It's, it, you know, it's not the Tanahashi of, of old, you know. Yeah. But those knees still, aren't helping him, man. It's not, fam. Needs to. Do you think you should pack it up? The thing is, yeah. The the human in me is saying, yeah, he needs to pack it up, but I'll never get tired of seeing him. Like mm. his entrance, his aura, like he's just he's Tanahashi. So you never get tired. It's just that sometimes I'm watching and I'm just like, yo, <laughs> them knees are probably gonna pack itself in soon. And like for me, I'm just watching as a worried fan. Like, I don't want this guy to come and collapse himself. But one thing I will say about Tanahashi is the fact that. <laughs> what he lacks for in in ring now at the moment, he makes up for in terms of like charisma and storytelling. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, he's not he's not Tanahashi of 2013, 2014. But you can see in terms of like the other things like his facial expression, where he's able to rile up the crowd. You know, just some of the sequences he's still able to do. It's like, you know what? He's he's still a god in this shit. He's still mm-hmm. a goat. You know, so I'll always salute him for that. It's just that. I just don't want him to now come and Lex Luger himself. Not Lex Luger, fuck Sid Vicious himself. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't want him to Sid Vicious himself. Because I know, like, bro, I play ball. I play basketball. So I know Same, what having yeah. bad knees does. I know what them knee pains and having... To, I know what it does, bro. <laughs> and, uh, bro, listen. I know what it does. So I just don't want him to now come and maybe go for a drop kick or maybe go for a high five flow. And next thing you know... Need yeah. done. I don't want him to. I don't want him to. But yeah, it was the result we thought we were gonna get. Facts, yeah. It was, uh, it's like it's like watching Ric Flair in it. Like when Ric Flair, Ric Flair was always like story. You you could tell stories through his in ring performance. But as yeah. he got older, and we used to see him on like Raw in two thousand two three or whatever, he really used to just tell stories in the ring and just be over dramatic. And I feel like that's where Tanahashi's kind of getting yeah. to now. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if I see him rest. I don't know. I think maybe by the time he's fifty, he's going to retire. I know. How does he know? He's for, like forty-six, I think. Oh yeah, later. Yeah, you know what I mean, <laughs> he's still back it up. He's, yeah, them knees of his. Yeah, it's, no, it's not. It's not doing well for him. Then next we had the reach for the sky ladder match, which included Aussie Open, Top Flight, Kingdom, LFI, and Lucha Brothers. And this was lie, probably. My match of the weekend. I listen honestly. I don't blame you. Yeah, I don't blame you. Ring of Honor's tag team division. And I'm sure we said this before. Clear. It is the best tag team division in wrestling. Thank you. No other company. I don't care whether it's WWE. I don't care if it's AW. I don't care if it's. I don't give a shit. But in terms <laughs> of to, in terms of totality and how stacked, and in terms of like the rest, the, the team's placements as well. Because that's another yeah. that's another important thing. You can have great tag teams in a company, but if they're not you being used well, you, I'm so sorry. I don't give a shit. If they're not put, being put in good fuse or high profile matches, or I don't see them week to week having decent matches, I'm so sorry. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. Yeah. I can create them a 2K23 20, and give them better matches. That's it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But Ring of Honor have the best tag team division. I don't Facts. give a shit what anyone says. 100%. No, and 100%. They all showed out. Facts. Was you open? They showed out. Top flight? Showed out. Kingdom, showed out. LFI, showed out. The Lucha Brothers, bro. You see the Stole raw. The 
Aussie Open are, are over. Top Flight yeah. are over. Kingdom are over. LFI are over. Lucha Brothers <laughs> are broke. <laughs> to hear the reaction when they came out. Yeah. It, mad. I could only imagine. Bro, it was nuts. Mm-mm. It was absolutely nuts. It made it, sense then. It was nuts, man. And bro, like, I, what else can we say about this match? It was that top, hasn't been said. Um, from from top to bottom, they just killed it. Like everybody just did their thing. Um, obviously there was that one uh, mishap. Oh with, yeah, um, Dante, wish, Dante wishing you a speedy recovery, bro. Yeah, but, he collapsed. He yeah, he's, he collapsed his ankle. Yeah, he's gonna and be out for he, a good he couple months. Broke that shit. He's gonna be out for time, man. He's gonna... Um, I don't know. I don't know if he'll come back the same, but God willing, he will. God willing, man. God um, willing because yeah, that spot that's, there. I don't even see. That's my only critique. That's what there didn't need to be done, in my opinion. Like as much as because I don't even you can't practice a spot like that. So they must have just said, "Cool, like we're gonna do this. This is the spot. Are you sure? Yeah, cool. I'm sure. Cool. We'll do it. We'll run it. First attempt. Boom. Ankle gone. And. It, you then you then sit there as a, from a fan and you kind of just like did you guys need to do that yeah you know um, yeah it was it was a bit too much like initially when I saw it when like when he was setting up for it I was thinking maybe he's just gonna go for the fear factor the um, the package car driver car driver yeah that's probably a safer option in terms of you know potentially getting um that's a safer option rather than a Canadian destroyer because there's a lot of motion that add, that's added into that someone yeah. now needs to try and land on their feet yeah it was a bit yeah. It was it was a bit too much, but I think looking back now, I think the right team won. Yes, I think yeah. the right team won. I do think neutral brothers was... do need a bit of time. Like, I did want Aussie Open to win. Yeah, same. But That's it's been made up for with their recent match. Yeah, and we'll talk about that. But yeah, I think neutral brothers are the right team. Yeah. God, what 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 is what else can we say about the neutral brothers? That hasn't been said already. They're just clear, man. They're actually just clear. They're two of the greatest. And it's mad saying that, like, from like our era where Lucha Libre isn't glorified as much as it used to be back then, but they are two of the greatest luchadors we've ever seen. Yeah. Ever. Um, shout out to them too, honestly. Deserved winners. And I I I'm I definitely think Mark had a hand in who won the match. I don't think that was solely down to TK. I think yeah. Mark probably said, yeah, give it to these two. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Um, next match, um, we have Willie Yuta versus Katsuri Shibata. Yeah, turn on the mic, fam. <laughs> <laughs> what type of music is this? This is your baby. This match Brother. Brother, 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 brother. <laughs> yeah, this match was... This match cooked. This match, yeah. Yeah. I knew, I, on paper, you just knew something special was going to come out of this match. You just knew. Yeah. And um, Shibata being kind of, what you can say is back full time now. It's looking like he had like three matches that we come I'm assuming. Um, it's insane. And from where he was to where he is now, he's he's the reason why I started watching New Japan Pro Wrestling. So I'm always going to be a fan. I'm always going to adore him. When I heard that music, I just, you know, you know, you just sit there, you just smile. You just, I can only imagine what it sounded like and what the fans were like when. Bro, I'll, you know, I'll say, I was, I was chatting to them lot after that. I'm like, saying to them, man, I'm like, you've actually seen Kota Bushi live. And you see Shibata live in LA. That's insane. <laughs> and the, well, I mean, to be fair, we saw Tanahashi at New Japan, but we're like we're seeing these men live. But mm. more so Shibata because he's not wrestling everywhere, and yeah. Ibushi just came back to wrestle mm-hmm. from an injury. As a man, we're enjoying. Bro, it's mad, fam. But this match, credit to Wheeler you are. You know, I know we we cuss him a lot, <laughs> but. One thing I'll never deny is Wheeler Yuta is an incredible wrestler. Facts. I will never deny it. Like, as much as I criticise his pure championship reign, I will never deny that he's a great wrestler. He's an incredible wrestler. And, you know, he needed to lose this match. Mm-hmm. He needed he to did. lose this match. One, he needed to be free from a title because whatever BCC... Black, yeah, they're and doing. And two, we need to start making a clear division for pure title. Shibata needs the title. Shibata needs... You know, 
So that way other people can be having pure matches and we can create a division and, you know, Shabbat doesn't have to, like, the pure title doesn't need to be on every week. Let's be real. Yeah. That's not a title that needs to be defended every single week. You don't need to be having 50 people you've defended the title with, which was my problem with We the Utah's title. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Title reign. And even Daniel Garcia's to a T. Because mm-hmm. you don't have to be defending that every single week or every two weeks. Let people, let people be hungry to get this belt. To prove, like, let people prove to you why they deserve to fight you for the belt. Not you just doing open exhibitions. Like, that's one of my criticisms of, of Tony Khan's bookings in general. He just likes, like, it's not, not, everyone, not everyone has to be a fighting champion, man. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> not everyone has to be a fucking fighting champion. What the fuck? So, with, with Shibata now being champion, would, would you do a thing where we don't see him for weeks on end and you just let people cook in this division, let's say? I mean, it's already too and late then, for that now. He fucking defended the yeah. belt against Christopher Daniels. He was, a decent, he was a good match. He was a good, good match. match. But, um, I mean, what I would easily do is maybe just, like, maybe have him, like, every two weeks. But he doesn't necessarily have to defend the title. Like, that's just my thing. I don't think... The oh, title like a proven good. ground type match. Sort Even of maybe, like, a proven ground title match one day. Or maybe, I don't know. I just don't feel like the pure title needs to be defended. Unless it, for him, he's doing maybe like a Jonathan Gresham where he's saying, I am the greatest pure, so that's why I'm defending it all the time. All comers mm-hmm. can come. Da, 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 da. But at the same time, I feel like when it comes to wrestling, like when it comes to title belts as well, like, yeah, you can call people out, but at the same time, I feel like you also need to prove yourself. Yeah, you need don't to just, be- you yeah. need to be worthy, bro. Like for someone like Shibata as well, you need to be worthy. You not yeah. not everyone's just gonna get in the ring with someone like him. You know what I'm saying? And, and he shouldn't. He's got that aura about him where he's like, if you're gonna face me, I need to see something from you. I need to see what you're really on. Yeah. So it's either you face me in a non-title match and prove yourself, or you know, like you said, we get a division and people go up against each other. Yeah. Um, that, that, and and that's how it sh- that's how it should be. So, yeah, I mean. Of the, my initial question before we recorded the podcast would have been to you, oh, who do you want his first defence to be against? But um, <laughs> it's a bit too late for that now. What the fuck? <laughs> like, when I saw, like when the match was when done, I, saw... I was like, you know what? Oh, we're cool. cool. Yeah, Ian. but when I first saw it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I said, we're Ian. <laughs> I just... <laughs> But then when I saw Ring of Honor, I said, oh, he's defended the belt against Christopher Daniels. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> no, no build, no context. It's like, I, oh God, here we go. Why is Christopher Daniels even challenging for that title? Like, what? what's the re... I'm not like... What's the reason? Like, like Cardi B would say, what's the reason? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Tell oh. me what the fucking reason. Uh, I didn't want to be that guy, but yeah, I saw it on paper. I said, for what reason? The main event. 15 years worth of beefing. We have... No, why, why are you saying it like that? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's what they sold it as. You know, 15 year feud. <laughs> Claudio Castagnoli versus Eddie Kingston. For the ROH World Championship. And I won't... I won't lie to you. This was a banger. I won't, listen. Did, did, did you actually enjoy it? This was a good match. I'll be real. Oh, like something I said... About Eddie Kingston, man. I'm just dampened down by the result. Eddie should have won. Yeah. Yeah. Eddie should have won. Mm. That's, that's, the, that's, my, that's more so my only gripe. Um, I cook Claudio... But I think it's done undeniable that Claudio is a great wrestler. Like, I'll never take that away from him. Like, this match felt like a real fight. Like, it felt like a real war. Some of the mm. spots that they were doing, a lot of the suplexes and some of the stuff outside, the slapping, it was like, it felt very, um, it felt personal. Personal, yeah. It's, it must be difficult work. Not difficult, but it's complicated working with someone that you genuinely don't like in real life, innit? Yeah. Um, but then it does make up to have sometimes, in some cases, a very, very good match because everything just looks like it comes across authentic and um and real. So yeah, shout out to these two. I mean, I just, I just this is something about Eddie that just I don't know. It's not clicking with me. It's never no. clicked with me. I, I like I like him as um a promo. I feel like as a promo, he's yeah. one of the top, like one of the very best. But just in ring, I'm just kind of just like, oh, go away. So I, I hear it. I, I see why you would want the belt off Claudio because he has been a very boring champion. Not He's gonna lie, hellish. He's been stinky. <laughs> but then hell. at the same time, um, I I don't know if Eddie is sounds harsh, but it's not someone you put as a face of a company. As as harsh as that may sound, and if he ever hears this, I cannot step foot in his city. But still, 
<laughs> okay, um, I, I, but the thing is, I see it as this year. Yeah. Because since Eddie signed to AW, there was always this, like, I don't know, this obsession. I, I almost look at it like a kink. Because a lot of these fans are kinky niggas, innit? I look at it as like a kink of, like, ah, oh, Eddie should win the world title or drop it, like, the next day. Or someone should cash in on him. Like, I'm just like, why do you want that for your world champion? Like, why mm-hmm. do you want their run to just solely be the praise and the chase of it as opposed to, like, an actual good title run? Because mm-hmm. for me, like, at one point, I did see Eddie as someone who I could view as maybe, like, a world champion. Mm-hmm. And as time went on, I started to realise, and this is no disrespect to Eddie. I look at Eddie like a glorified loser. For me, Eddie's a glorified loser. Yeah. Eddie is someone that is, will win the medial matches, he'll win the matches that don't necessarily matter, some of the decent feuds, but he bottles it when it comes to the big fights. When yeah. it comes to the big fights, always bottles it. So, of course, with certain wrestlers, the chase of it is always good and it adds to their story. We've seen it this weekend with Sonada, you know, but mm-hmm. at the same time, I don't ever look at a wrestler and think to myself, yeah, I want them to win just so they can lose it because that chase of them chasing after it again or their character development from that would be amazing. Brother, who gives a fuck about all that shit? <laughs> who, who, wants, who wants to see that? Yeah, for real, for real. Like, don't get me wrong. Ain't... Yeah, if he's chasing the title, promo of a lifetime. We'll, we'll be getting sick promos here and there. We'll be telling us how he's from New York and you know, how he nearly got killed and how he's nearly he's seen people die and, you know, how he could have chosen to either strap a gun or yeah, strap yeah, his yeah, boots. Yeah. Like, we hear the promos all the time and, you know, I'm, I'm invested. I'm good. I, I like them. But at the same time, like, come on. He wins the title. He gets this jovial celebration and then he loses it the next night. On He loses it at AW Dynamite a few days later. For what? What's the point? That's the thing with Eddie for me. It's just like, you win the title, cool. And then I just don't see what's next after that. Like, I'd rather him, I guess, I guess, yeah. I guess I'm still in the same boat where I'd rather him just not win the title. um, Yeah, I mean, and and, the thing is, when people say that, for me, I'm just like, then give him the Ring of Honor World title then. Mm. Like, you can be, like, you're not necessarily the face of a, you're not the face of a TV show. You're the face of a streaming show. And then, and for the most part, let's be real. AEW does not give a shit about the Ring of Honor World Title. It's under the same umbrella, but the Ring of Honor World Title is a, is a match that is a belt that they fucking defend on dark. Yeah, they dark can't elevation. Make it, like they can't make it as, as prestigious as the AEW belt. That, that upsets me because I'm a Ring of Honor fan. We're a Ring of Honor fan. Yeah. I've always looked at the Ring of Honor World Title as up there, mm-hmm. but now it's literally just above the NWA World Title, just above it. A little bit, and that doesn't help that Clujo has it. When Jericho oh, had it, oh, it, it when Jericho it was, had it, yeah, it, it was gone. Oh, it skyrocketed. Then Clujo on it back again. It's like, oh, whoops, here we go again. <laughs> it's a fucking trinket. It's a fucking, it's a fucking 2K belt. Unlockable, so, fam. So, my question <laughs> to you is a pop down, who... down belt. <laughs> that belt is horrible, but anyway, we're not here to talk about that belt. Um, who's next? I know, I know that was the inevitable question, but yeah, who... who's next? Um... I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you because, bro, honestly, the guy that should have been next still holds a championship. That's what irritates me. I want, I wanted to see Samoa Joe versus Claudio. That would have been a sick match. Sick feud, sick match, and um, I, no. I, you would have given the belt to Samoa Joe. There's no way Claudio retained. Yeah. yeah. Now, I mean, I, I would have probably gone Claudio, then Eddie, and then maybe Samoa... Clo, no, Clo, Claudio, Eddie, Samoa Joe. Mm. And then, don't know how long Samoa Joe will hold the belt. And at some point, maybe Mark Briscoe win the belt. Final yeah. battle. I'm still screaming that. I said that first episode, I'm still screaming that. Final yeah, battle. Defending that one, Mark Briscoe has to be fighting for the world title. He has to fight for the I hear it. He has to fight for the world title. But yeah, obviously, pro- now... Now I'm, we haven't got that, so what's... So... Bro, I couldn't tell you, because even what's happening on AWTV with BCC, for me, it makes no sense why Claudio still has the title, because, bro, you've got bigger fish to fry. Mm. You've got the elite. Why do you yeah. need to keep coming back here? 
Because unless, 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 maybe Claudio is the next big feud. So I don't know how long this um, BCC and Elite feud is going to be for. Unless the Elite come to Ring of Honor and cost Claudio the world title. That's my only, that's my only justification of him potentially keeping this title. Because I honestly don't see why he still has this belt. If the Elite are able to cost him the title, yeah, then I hold my hands up. Mm -hmm. Cool, fair enough. It's furthering another story. It's not it's not helping Ring of Honor, but it's furthering another story, which makes sense. But other than that, I don't. I couldn't tell who's next. Unless Nigel McGuinness gets up out of his seat and and starts. And I was just about to, I was just about to ask you that. WWE. I mean, Nigel McGuinness hasn't wrestled in God knows how many years since TNA. Mm. I've been hearing murmurs that he could potentially return back to wrestling. I don't know how true that is. I don't want to listen to people on the internet. Mm -hmm. I, I've not, I haven't researched anything in terms of like whether he's been cleared by doctors because we've seen it in the past with wrestlers like the likes of like Soraya, yeah, um, other wrestlers where Edge, they, weren't, yeah. they, they weren't cleared by WWE doctors, but they got cleared by outside doctors. But then after the, it's, you know, I don't know my Nigel McGuinness's situation, and it's been a while since he's wrestled. I don't know whether he still has it in him. I'm sure the ring rust is ring cobweb Real. at this point. Is, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's eroding at this point. <laughs> but that would be very interesting to see. That I'm here. I'd, I'd be here for it. I would. I mean, I know it's someone that you could say or argue that doesn't deserve because he's just popped up out of his commentary seat and just said, I'm challenging for the world title. But... This is this is this is where you again are right in terms of not necessarily building a world title division, but not building up contenders for the world title because there's I I just can't. I mean, you could say Takeshka, you could say I didn't think you about could him. you could say him because bro just don't lose. <laughs> He's heavily unless, unless unless it's the big match. Yeah, unless, unless it's a big match. Um. Claudio versus Takeshita, I don't think we've had that, and I would like to see that. Be a good match. I would like to see that for the world. I don't, I don't know how you tell the story, though, because I don't know if um, Takeshita's English is good enough to, to hold a story. But then again, you probably don't even need a story. It's probably just... Yeah. Maybe Claudio handpicks him, says, you know what, I've seen what you've been doing. Would you like to challenge for the world title? Yeah. I mean, Don Callis has been trying to... Has been has been liaising with Takeshita for a while. So yeah. Maybe you know Don Callis is the one that steps up to the plate and says, "Listen, you might have beef with my elite guys. That's cool, but for the meantime, here's my guy." Yeah. Takeshita comes out. I'd like to see that. Jeez. I think I'll be dope. I think I'll be, I'll be cold. I'll be really dope, man. Uh, but yeah, that was um, what's it called? That was Blood of Honor. Out of five, how would you rate the pay per view? Uh. Give it three point five. Okay. Yeah. What about you? Four, yeah. Four, four out of five. It was a good. It was a good. Mm. Minus the results. Actually, I'll go three point eight. Okay. <laughs> two, of, two of the results have made it go down, but for the most part, it's a short pay per view. Good matches, top to bottom. Mm -hmm. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. Let's fast forward a little bit. Um, I know you you watched a bit of impacts this week. How was it? Yeah. I know um, Josh Alexander, he... Oh, Relinquished. Oh, God. Yeah. That, that scene of his, his his son going to grab the belt. <laughs> when it's, bro, cinema. 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 Um, it, it was good. Um, actually, no. Didn't, let me not even try and downplay it. I did enjoy Impact this week. Um, minus the, the... Bro, every time that zombie character is on the show, I'm, I'm never going to fully rate it. Until he's gone, I'm never fully rating it. <laughs> but yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, we the opener, I really enjoyed. I just t t t this week, this week though, I just became a big fan of TMDK. Just this week, oh, there, there, bro. There. I, I'm, a, I'm a fan. I, I loved him. I've I'm a him. big fan now. I'm, like, I'm just, I'm just upset that WWE run didn't go to plan. Yeah, they were killing it, and even before Brunson Reed went back to WWE. He became the leader of TMDK and he was absolutely killing it. He left and then I don't know. I feel like Zack Sabre Jr. now being the leader has skyrocketed. Taking it to different levels, yeah. Now they got Robbie Eagles. Yeah. Gone. Yeah. I've I mean. seen that. 
Fraction of bare man, that's what you need. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? They've got five think... mad now, so you know what I mean? And then Shane, Shane even tweeted out the other day, like the list of members that they've had. And the list is clear, you know, like oh, it's, it's got Bronson some. Reed, Preston Vance. Um, I can't remember who else was in there. But bro, they've had members, bro. They've had, they've had man in there. Bro. I was bro, looking at it, I said, cool. This gang faction members. is. <laughs> gang members. Yeah, yeah, me they... too. I, I want to be part of TMDK, fam. <laughs> I, I want to be part of TMDK, fam. When you see, when you see the shirt in a couple of weeks, don't ask bro. questions. When you see the shirt next episode, TMDK. Okay, trust me. <laughs> Don't ask questions. But yeah, now Impact was great. Um, I really like the ending, obviously, with uh Josh relinquishing the title and then um, you know, them going back and forth with I can't remember his name now. I keep forgetting his name. It was the stalker. I'm gonna call him the stalker. You know what I'm talking about? The number one uh, contender. Steve Macklin. Steve Macklin basically saying that, you know, he's he's a he's a he's a dickhead, basically. And uh he he feels like he's guaranteed to win the championship, but he's not. Um, it was it was interesting. I like I like that they are drag not dragging it out, but making a story out of it because they could have just simply said, "All right, cool, boom, boom, you two. Yeah. But they're making a story out of it, which is nice. Uh, would you? My question to you is: Would you have done the whole? Would you have done the whole keep Josh Alexander as a champion and then crown another champion, and then when he comes back? You know, oh, as in like interim champion, interim champ. I, I know it's been overdone. Fucking hate interim <laughs> champion. I swear to you. Listen, look at my eyes. I hate them with a passion. I fucking can't stand interim champion. Fair enough. Because but one... I feel like just just no, because of Josh, Josh's Josh's run has been for for impact standard anyway. It's been very good. Yeah. So for him I to just it's... have to relinquish it and and disappear for now, what maybe five months. Amen. <sighs> Got to charge it to the game. <laughs> I was gonna say the game's the game. <laughs> you got to charge it to the game with your contactless fam. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, it's been interesting the, like the last few years when we're doing the whole like interim champion stories. But mm. my only issue is that interim champions are only interim champions. They're never actual official champions, and I don't think that's fair on the wrestlers who end up winning the belt and then end up defending it. Because once they, if they now lose to the person that comes back, on their record, it's just interim. It's not, it's not it's official fair. champion, which is unfair. Do you know what I mean? And fair. two, like, if you're injured and you can't compete, you're getting paid anyways. You just can't compete. To, you're not a champion. Like, for me, I think it's the right thing to do. Just relinquish the title. Yeah. And, you know, once you come back, you get first dibs. You, do you know what I mean? Whether you win it back or not, mm-hmm. you, work, you work your way up again. But Steve, Steve Macklin has to win. He's been chasing that belt for two years. <laughs> Since pandemic. Since the Panini. After all, <laughs> he has to sister Panini, he's been chasing that belt. Like at um, this point, I feel like I'm I've I've had more of a chance to win the belt before he has. <laughs> and that's not fair because Steve Macklin has been killing it in yeah. the X Division. He was killing it. Um bro, like Steve Macklin is like, and it's crazy to me to think like sometimes I forget he was in WWE. Yeah, yeah, and I was gonna say the it's night and day how he was in WWE and impact. The matches he's had in impact compared to what he was doing in a tag team, bro. Come on, man. Steve Macklin is one of the best wrestlers in that company. So it's only it's only right. It's it's only right. Fair enough. And, and his uh, his girlfriend is Diona Perrazzo. Who the f- come true, on, man. I'm a true, fan. True, so true. I, I, come on. If if that's he your won. missus, if he that's won. your missus, low key, they can say you don't necessarily need the world title because you have her. But <laughs> listen, well, man can't live on bread alone. Sometimes you, you have to be greedy and have everything. Yeah, you know what I mean, so you know what I, mean? I hear it. I um, honestly hear it. And then. Do you like where they've gone with the X Division Championship? Oh, now well, we have with Gresham and uh, Mike Bailey. They had a number one contenders match for, well, what was now the number one contenders match for the X Division Championship. Um, I I never really saw Gresham being in the X Division per se, but you know when I when when they announced that I said, all right, cool, fair enough. This is what they want. This is the direction they want to go down because they've been like you said, Gresham seems to be just kind of like at home now, like in Impact. It, it doesn't seem. I mean, I would love him to go back to Ring of Honor, but I just don't think it's ever going to happen. On the TK just, watch, just crazy. I was reading his interview that he did where he was speaking about his depar- departure from Ring of Honor, um, and as much as it seems like there's bad. I can't remember everything, but as much as it seems like there's maybe like bad blood, I feel like for him, he just felt like he was just completely 
done unjust. But he just feels like there was maybe certain things that he done through going to therapy, he could have done better. So oh, fair enough. In terms of that, I don't think the door is like completely wide shut. I just think for him now, I think he just needs to take his time really um, in TNA. Do what you need to do. And I'm sure like Tony Khan just seems to be like a very forgiving guy. He's not I don't yeah. look at him like a Vince McMahon or Triple H where it's just burdening hate. Like, yeah, if I hate you. Yeah, facts. Because even 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 Leo Rush said, you know, him and TK still talk like yeah. pretty much every other day. Um, and he left on kind of bad terms when you really look at the situation. So yeah, maybe, maybe not, maybe not. Yeah, but um so, I mean him in the X Division, I think it will help him. I think it's good mm-hmm. because one, the lineage of X Division champions is amazing. Two, we also remember that X Division title comes with the option C. He can cash in that belt for that world heavyweight title whether he's ready to do so. Um and three, I think stylistically, because Josh Gresham, um, Jonathan Gresham can do everything, I think it m- works perfectly for him now, just so people mm-hmm. can cons- consistently see him, just work the exhibition style for now. Yeah. Just work enough. the exhibition style. That's completely fine. Like, that, that doesn't take it, being in the exhibition doesn't take anything away from you. So, would I like to see him as a world champion or a pure champion? Again, of course. Of course. But, this is something new for him and I think it works. And the matches he's been having with Mike Bailey have been fucking mad. Fucking amazing, bro. They've they, been they're, fucking mad. Their third match this week was really good. I, it obviously, it ended in a no contest. Um, x Division champion decided he wanted to get involved. So we could potentially now be getting a triple threat match, which I don't really mind. Um, guess one of them has to be protected. I don't know who. Maybe Mike Bailey might be the one being protected. But yeah. still... Yeah, man. Impact seems to be going in the, the right direction. Impact, Impact's cooking, man. And yeah. I have this. This is probably a wild hot take. Mm. In the next year, what's yeah. today's date? The 10th of April. Yeah. In the next year, Mike Bailey would have been an Impact World Champion. No, I can't see it. I can't see it, bro. Bro, in, Mike Bailey will be an Impact Champion the next year. He would have, would have at least won it, or by this time next year, he would be in a hot feud for that impact world title. They really, they're really high on him though. Bro, from the minute he got he got hired by Impact, I said he's gonna win the world title. I don't know when, but within the first five years of him being in Impact, he would have won that title. And I think it's either been a year or two. It might have been a year so far. Mm. I think he's either gonna win the world title or he would he's gonna be competing in a high level feud for the world title. Fair enough. I, I, bro, I, it's it's weird because I, I, yeah, I can't unsee it. You you see it. That's your vision, isn't it? So bro, I, listen, we'll, we'll come and back when I'm right. I promise you that, that <laughs> episode of Indie Taker is gonna be all reverb. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna cause my hell out that podcast. I'm gonna spoil it. All reverb, bro. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh oh God, man. man. No, but yeah, not Impact's cooking, man. This is why yeah, we have the man. Indie Takers because. I'm sure a lot of you probably don't know what's happening in Impact at the moment, or you're probably thinking, oh, TNA is still about, what the hell are they doing? That's why us men are here to give you guys the latest Max. scoop and goss to let you guys know. Um, New Japan. New Japan, Sakura Genesis. Hey. Can't lie, top to bottom, this card was cold. But you, are you, okay, you watched it. I, I've only seen a few matches. I haven't, I haven't top, seen the whole thing. Top to bottom, I think it was... Um, obviously, like, with, with all cards, it's not every match you on the card. Uh, one thing I will say is um, Sho from the House of Torture. He's one of my guys, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But he's become a full-fledged comedy wrestler now. I, that it looks like. And it fucking pisses me off. Because mm. for me, I always looked at him as like the, the future of the, the Super Junior Division. But yeah, it's looking like he's just going to be good. Uh, a flippy version of Toriyanu. Just going to be busting joke and pulling out a wrench and I don't like that for him because he's talented he should be like he should have been a multi-time um, uh, junior heavyweight ch- um, champion but clearly they have other plans for him they want they want mm. people to laugh so yeah man fuck the bookers because I'm not, happy <laughs> <laughs> I'm not fucking happy with that because I'm a big fan of show for me he's um, better than yo but yo think... has been killing it and it's pissing yeah. me off because yo is good but when they first split up, I thought Yo was very boring. Yeah, I thought it was very boring. I thought mm-hmm. Sho had the charisma, he had the look, he had the skill. But the past year has showed me 
that is not trick. sometimes your heroes will trick you <laughs> and i've been tricked i can see it because <laughs> i'm being tricked my show and up and down the card no matter where it is whether it's wrestle kingdom whether it's dominion whether it's secure genesis whether it's fucking the super junior um all-star festival show just wants to make people laugh and bro go to a fucking comedy club go to the, go to the e you go, to, go to the e or be a character in the fucking Yakuza game or fucking Sleeping Dogs. Go be a, go be a, <laughs> go be a Sleeping Dogs 2 if you want to make people laugh. New Japan shouldn't be placed. Oh, cool. gosh. You're too young in your career to be doing that. Anyways, let's get on to more pressing matters, better matches. Mm-hmm. Um, what matches did you see? And we'll talk about those. Um, well, one thing, I, I was going to touch on the, the elephant in the room, Sonata. Right. I can't lie I was, to you. I was shocked, but I'm here for it. I, I was <laughs> absolutely shocked, bro. I couldn't believe it. Like I thought I was seeing something that happened years ago and I just missed it. I didn't see it. But fam, it's looking. Do you are you said do you think they kind of passed this Okada era now? Do you think like it's a completely new era, or do you think they just wanted a shock factor for the show? Because I, I, I just think it's a shock factor. I don't think it's until Okada is crippled, <laughs> it will <laughs> always be his error. I'm so sorry. Because until Shota is at the top, yeah. that's who I see is going to be like the next, the next that's star. That's what I think, yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't, yeah. But I think for now, I think it's just more so kind of giving Okada a break, kind of giving us something new. Because one thing, the problem with a lot of these Japanese companies, especially New Japan, they like to take mm-hmm. like the same thing over and over again, get the same, New, New Japan Cup winners, the same best of Super Junior winners, the same. Do you know what I mean? We never get anything new. And when we do get new people, when they end up winning, like maybe like a, a New Japan Cup or a G1 Climax, they never win the title. Yeah. And then they have to always resort to good old trusty Okada to win so he can get back to the title. And mm-hmm. for me, it's it's a bit boring, man. And I feel like now, like, firstly, seeing just five guys beat LIJ, that's when I was like, Oh, okay. Because they cut a promo saying how they want to change the game. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, cool. This is something different because we rarely like these are men that uh, fear these men were in flipping uh, Suzuki dude. And and when just five guys became a thing, I didn't ever look at them as like anything. I just thought, yeah, these are just gonna drop. yeah, sure. But when I saw them beat Elijah, I was like, oh, okay, tides are turning. <laughs> tides are really turning. Maybe yeah, I should have saw this when Tanada won the New Japan Cup because initially I wanted. Um, J um David Finley to win. David Finley, yeah, I was I was uh, with David Finley. Now I'm thinking it was the right decision for Sonada to win. But yeah. seeing Sonada win, I was like, yo, because Sonada was doing this whole thing of like, yeah, I'm a, I, I don't have time to drop people in their heads. I'm a wrestler. Da, 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 da. But now he's changed up his look. He doesn't look boring anymore. He seems very personable. He's always been a world looks, man. He looks uh, like a champion now. Now he's dropping people in their heads, and it's like, mm. okay, I'm getting shit done. So. And, you know, there was loads of callbacks to their, their last match when they fought, fought for the world title, how, you know, Sonado couldn't find the counter to the to the Rainmaker. Rainmaker. And, you know, this DDT that he's doing, which is, I think it is called the Rainmaker DDT. When, um, I think that's, he, disrespect. that's disrespectful. Um, Velveteen Dream. I think he used to call it the Rainmaker DDT. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that being the, the his finisher. His finisher, And yeah. I love the move. But that being the reversal to the Rainmaker, I'm just like, it's poetic. And just seeing him win, like, when the, when the referee hit three, I said, oh, shit. Like, yeah, I, I was shocked, bro. <laughs> it's one of those, like, I already knew the result. But I'm watching, I'm thinking, oh, shit. Actually happened. Okay. He's the champion. Let's mm. so fucking go. Do you know what I mean? So um, I can't remember who it was as well, but after the match, I went. I was on YouTube and I watched some stuff um, that they did backstage. And bro, I'm like, can you let this man rest? Okada's there, breathing heavy, depressed, <laughs> sad like this on his knees. I can't remember who it was yet, but it was just like, oh yeah, we want to face you. Like me and me and my guys want to face you in a, in a six man, find two man. I oh said, yeah, bro, yeah, yeah. just, just <laughs> lost the world title. Like, let, let, do you know what I mean? Like, let him, let him go through it a little bit. You man are not even letting him breathe. I was mad. This oh. is probably going to be some of it. It's probably going to be like Toriyanu or. Yoshihashi or go to like someone mm. from Chaos. It's not going to be anybody like new or anything. new. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was like what's the point, man? Oh, I yeah. did watch the um women's match as well. 
That was, bro, for me, that's match of the night. That cooked, man. That was match of the night. Azumi Mercedes. and um, Hazuki and Mercedes. For me, that was match of the night. She's told everyone's a shark. <laughs> like that, bro. That match. <laughs> <laughs> What type of music is this? Bro, Mercedes is telling everyone to shut up because I was trying to. She she said I'm trying. I was trying to tell you what I was about in the E, and you weren't listening. Now I'm out here shining. What are you really saying now? Like, how can you doubt me now, fam? Bro, all three of them, from Azumi to Azuki, Mm -hmm. bro, they absolutely fucked and. Hook, like you could tell there were certain parts where like when Mercedes weren't involved, them not just wanted to go off. They just wanted to like they just, wanted to, five star. they just wanted to show speed and say, listen, you know what? We're on a new Japan platform. Let mm-hmm. us show you what stardom is about. We're gonna show you what this we're gonna show you what speed is, we're gonna show you what a true <laughs> triple threat match is. And bro, like none of them missed. None of them missed. They made none a of, statement. None of them that, missed, bro. That match felt like a statement to me. Bro, personally. none of that bro, for me it was like we are here. Like, mm. we're the only women's match on this card. Right, cool, we're going to show cool. you that we're going to have the best match. And for me, easily, it was... It's debatable between this match and the tag team match. The, I have the, not seen that one. <laughs> Am I missing no. out? <laughs> bro, what? I've seen, I seen the results. I've seen the results. So I know. The matches, and this is for everybody that's watching as well. If you haven't seen um, Sakura Genesis, the matches I would suggest, um, Triple Threat, the Frit- ah, English, Triple threat match. Triple threat mm. match with Mercedes, Azumi, and Azuki. Um, Zack Sabre Jr. versus Shota and Mina. That match there, <clears throat> I want to put a reverb on. Can't be asked. That match was incredible. Ozzy Open versus Bushimon. Incredible. I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna sit here and say it. Everybody can cook me. I don't give a fuck. This match was better than this this card, top to bottom, was better than Wrestle Kingdom. Fair enough. This card, enough. top to bottom, maybe no. Outside of the um the the six man tag the the Minoru Suzuki great Will couple. Will and, Will and Kenny okay but that, that's just one <laughs> <laughs> that's just one match I but, top to bottom yeah. yeah each match for me was better than Wrestle Kingdom wow you guys can cook me I don't give a fuck you guys can cook me but I, yeah to be fair the two matches I've watched so far have been very very good Bro, the, the triple threat and the main event dumb. um. Matches like maybe I, done. Bro, maybe I shouldn't have skipped. Maybe I should have just because I was trying to make sure I watched it in time, like or watch the main ones in time. But no, don't get me wrong. Um, like, there's matches where it's like you don't have to watch it. Yeah, just skip to the end. Like, for example, Bullet Club versus um, Hamatonga Hukuleo and Master Weto. Like, yeah, that match wasn't that like, great, but the story behind it was just more so the dissension between David Finley and um, El Phantasma. As, yeah. And El Phantasmo is now out of Bullet Club. Well, he's been kicked out of Bullet Club. Hey! It's going to be interesting to kind of see what happens there. Um, I mean, I don't know. Weirdly enough, watching this segment, I don't know if this is a good thing. I don't like David Finley. I don't know if that's him being a good but, deal yeah. or if that's me just like, already being sick. I was going to ask, is that, is that personal? Like, do you feel... No, no. The thing is, I, like, I think David Finley's great. I think, as a wrestler, mm-hmm. I think he's good. But because I'm so used to him not being a dickhead and a jackass, now that he is a bit of it, I'm just like, I don't get, I, I, I'm just, I'm not feeling you. But that mm-hmm. I don't think it's a, a feeling you of like, pause of me not liking the way you wrestle or like, you know, I think I think he's a good wrestler. I think he's great at what he does. But I just don't like him. Like, I mean, maybe this is what Bullet Club needs. They actually need a leader where, fuck all this. Hated. Fuck all this shit. We are we're about business. Let's get to business because the commentators did make a good um, they did make a good notice about how Bullet Club aren't in any title scenes at the moment. Not the mad way, never. I mean now, well, obviously in 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 New Japan, yeah, obviously, yeah, obviously now, obviously, um, David Finney's gonna be fighting for the never um never open weight title, but before they're not involved in any, they're not in any title picture whatsoever, outside yeah, of mad. like the Americans, isn't it? So, yeah. And there was one point they had all the belts, so kind of need to get back to mm, business, so, isn't it? And I think to this weekend was like the was it ten year anniversary of when Bullet Club first came out. Hey, we're getting old. That's scary, you know, because it feels like yesterday that they were just put together, and exactly. we've had so many great uh, leaders pass on: Omega, Finn Balor, and AJ, AJ Styles, Styles, and yeah. 
Even Cody, small, small. Years, Cody, small. Oh, co-captain. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> crazy, Ten man. Ten years. Yeah, man. But yeah, no, Sakura Genesis was a great show, man. Honestly, I enjoyed it. Bottom. Um, yeah, even matches I haven't mentioned, like Hiromi Takashi, Robbie Eagles. Eagles mm. is over as hell, man. Yeah, I've heard about Eagles him. Eagles is over as hell. He's, he's, he's... Yeah, man, like, it's... Yeah, top to bottom. I'm, I'm looking forward to their next few shows. They've got um, New Japan Strong shows and stuff in America. I think they've got two shows in America. Um, mm. And then, yeah, yeah, and then they've announced um, Best of Super Junior. They, I think the lineup is coming out either this week or next week. And then, obviously, they've done an announcement for G1 Climax. It should be interesting. Hopefully, they are not boring. And they, you know, look to add people from, shocked. you know, the AEW, yeah. the Ring of Honors, DDT, Noah. You know, you've got all these relationships. Use them. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Tired of all the same brackets, all the same people and the same matchups. Like, don't get me wrong, the matches will bang. That's not the problem. Mm-hmm. The match quality isn't the problem. It's just it's just the give, lineups. Give us something fresh, man. Give us something new. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm tired of going to Enish and eating jollof rice and I have jollof rice at home. Sometimes give me I don't know like a goosey soup and yam porridge or something. Is it? Wow, I need jollof rice now, man. You know I mean, like, oh, you made me hungry. <laughs> 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 give us something else, man. We're trying to eat. We're trying to eat well, man. What I mean, um, MLW. MLW. Uh, that. Five minutes before this cuts off. So the the I'm not gonna go over everything. The one thing I do want to talk about um is the open weight, the it's middleweight open weight, the one that um Lindsay Dorado holds. Oh, the middleweight, yeah, the middleweight. Um, that is looking very interesting. That scene right now because I haven't, now seen, I haven't seen this. I haven't seen MLW. I haven't okay. seen this MLW, but yeah. So Leo Rush came out uh before the match. And basically just did the whole I'm the greatest middleweight champion of all time, MLW. Sat down at commentary. He was giving me jokes. He was just chatting rubbish. Lince Dorado went up against uh Son of Havoc. Okay. Um, and it was a very it was it was it was a good match. And then all hell broke loose. Rush did what he did, tacked him with the belt, and basically he said, you know, cool, this but this belt's mine, left the ring, took the middleweight belt. So we've got a bit of a story developing between Dorado and and um, Rush. And again, hate bringing them up, but they can tell history from the E, saying that you know they they did what they did. They, they didn't make it there. They came here. Yeah. Now now we're bringing the fight here. Whatever, blah blah blah. So that was good. Um, you mentioned that the Fatu and is it John Henning? Yeah, um, let's, call him, let's call him Johnny MLW. Yeah, Johnny <laughs> Johnny, 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 Johnny Major. <laughs> yeah, apparently that match was good. Um, I haven't seen it, but yeah, I heard that match was great. Need to watch that as well. But yeah, MLW again doing fine. I think someone was heard us because there was less lucha references and less lucha underground style presentation in this show. It was more MLW. Yeah. Um, which is what I like. So yeah, again, if you're not watching Impact, if you're not watching MLW, I highly recommend it, man. Those two shows and MLW is very easy to digest. In total, it's like forty five minutes. Yeah. So yeah, oh, man. Boy, this has been a very long episode of. I mean, I feel, I feel like I like the longer episodes. Oh, quick one, two quick things. Um, I don't know if you saw. I don't know if his storyline of his real, but Enzo has been fired. Oh yeah, I did see that. I, yeah, I don't know if that's story or thing. And he just literally they were well, they just showed his match with Micro Man. Bro, he was just on the show yeah, this they week. They just showed his match with Micro Man. Oh, the way he drop kicks Micro Man. <laughs> Uh, he flew like a chain arm. So sorry, <laughs> the way he flew was crazy. <laughs> oh gosh! Yeah, I don't and know. The last, yeah, I don't even know. And the last thing is, did you are you a fan of the uh, new Ring of Honor belts? Nah, I mean nah, they're like... they're not bad. They're nice, but at the same time, they're not like they're like a lazy two K job. Like yeah, <laughs> I, I just want to create some quick belts. So yeah, like seems like they didn't put any time into it. It was just. Yeah. Cool. Every belt can look relatively the same, um, same silver color. Like nah, that's... I think right. they should have just kept the belts that they had before they returned. Well, yeah, exactly. The belts, was... before, yeah, those belts were calm. They didn't mm-hmm. really have them for that long as well. But Tony Khan is gonna Tony Khan in it. We're gonna give Ring of Honor these belts, but then you'll be presenting the, the international belt and the Ring. Of... Look at the belts that they have in AW. Them belts have got fucking bust downs on them, bust down bezels. This is insane, isn't it? Baguettes. 
you're coming to give these man the plain Janes. You're taking a piss, man. That TNT belt that Jade has, fam, is is bro bust down Avalanche, bust down Roly Avalanche. No my OBJ. <laughs> Come, <laughs> <on, man. laughs> Come on, man. Match up, match up. The match up. What are we saying for match recommendations this week? Um, do you have one? See, I'm I keep forgetting. I'm just gonna go. Seeing as we're talking indie, let's 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 keep it indie. Mark Oku versus Takeshita PWG banger. Che, yeah, you win because I ain't even got. A match. <laughs> I, need, I need to, you know, I need to do. I need to write a list down so I'm ready every week. Um, Takeshita versus did... Mark Oku banger. Who was it? There was a match I did watch recently. It was Zack Zaber Jr. versus someone, and I completely forgot the opponent. Yeah. But it's for the TV title. Shout out to New Japan, by the way. I see you lot. You lot are you lot are doing you lot are doing work. Every I don't know if you notice this, but every TV championship match gets put on YouTube as well. Okay. Because it's because yeah. it's TV. Yeah, 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 makes sense. They're smart, smart people. But yeah, that's it, man. That's it. Next week we're gonna have I think maybe two episodes, maybe it's like a normal one and then like an extra. We've got some very, very special guests coming on. Um it's, it's definitely this week, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've got some very special guests. If you're if you're a 2K gamer like us, well, you're we eating. Enjoy. And if you watch their show this weekend, yeah. You're you're we're gonna be eating, we're gonna be talking about everything. So obviously we're gonna do it boys, and then we're gonna do it boys extra. The 2K lovers is it. So yeah, mm-hmm. man, it's been your boy Del Boy. It's been young wolf. It boys, indie takers. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. Yeah, keep supporting, man. Indie way, no way. Wow. Wow.